Howdy there folks, I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs and this is the video review of the iDapt i4 charging dock and cradle. Now, I know that you guys hate charging stuff just as much as I do, and it sucks when you have tons of devices, from MP3 players to cell phones to amplifier. You know, you just are plugging stuff all around the room with different USB bricks which get lost, some don't have enough current to charge other devices, it's just a mess. And the iDapt i4 is supposed to simplify it. Now I don't really get why it's called the i4 because it only charges three devices simultaneously, but it's pretty neat nonetheless. On the back here, you have your power cord, which is included, and you'll just plug this into the wall. And right here, you have three different slots. Now, the iDapt i4 ships with six different nodes. There's one iPod and iPhone, there's one micro USB, one mini USB, and three other generic tips. I think a five volt, a Samsung, and a Nokia charger for older devices. Now, that is one thing you're going to want to mention and be aware of. You can find the iDapt Pro for a lot cheaper, but you have to be aware and conscientious of the devices that you wanna charge the iDapt with. Let's say I have an iPod or two iPods and an iPhone, therefore I'd want three 30 pin dock connector tips. These run you 10 bucks extra. So that's gonna be an additional $30, which really kinda of bites. However, if you order from iDap's website for an additional three bucks, they'll let you choose your tips. Now you don't get six, but you get four that you want. So I could order three of these and maybe a micro USB or something like that. So that is nice and something to be aware of because even though the price on Amazon is cheaper, if you have two of the same devices, it may be cheaper to buy from the iDap website because you can choose your tip rather than having to pay $10 for an additional tip later. Hopefully that made sense. But these are interchangeable. They can move around. I can put them wherever they want. So if I have a device and they pop out, I love it. I don't really know why they jump out so much, but I think it's pretty funny. So let's say I have a big mini USB powered device. Like this is not a big device, but let's just say it were. Um, I can choose to charge this on the front so that it doesn't collide with the back. Additionally, if I have other devices that run on micro USB or an iPod or iPhone, for example, I could put my iPhone back here. So you can charge three devices simultaneously and it does a really pretty nice job. It does charge them rather rapidly. Uh, in fact, it charges faster than the uh, than what's included with the iPhone, which surprised me. So that was something that I found pleasant to see. It charged my iPhone really, really quickly. Additionally, uh, you can interchange these, which is nice, and I talked about that earlier. Now, there is a power button up here, which I don't really understand because it does trickle charging. So when your iPhone is fully charged, it stops charging until your iPhone says, hey, I need more power, which happens at about 99%, and it'll start charging again. So you're not wasting power. And I feel like this on and off switch is just a hindrance because sometimes I'd bump it, sometimes I'd knock it, and it would turn the whole thing off, and I'd plug my phone in, forget to turn this on, and it would stop charging. So that was something that I didn't like and I feel should just be removed altogether. Now on the side here, you do find an additional USB port. This does support 10 watt charging. So if I have an iPad or something that requires a lot of power, I can plug it in here. Additionally, if there's something that's too big or floppy to fit in these otherwise pretty flimsy ports, I can do that. Now as you can see, these do fluctuate quite a bit. So if you have a heavy device like an iPad, it's not gonna fit in here. Now iPhones and other devices are fine and I think part of the wiggle room is so that it doesn't provide so much tension and forced against these ports, but still, I don't really like the way that this is designed and I felt like I was gonna break things all the time. And you'd really pretty much just, you're gonna wanna use your device outside of the dock. You're not gonna wanna pull this up and type on it because it's just gonna be too fluctuating. However, that is the uh, iDapt i4. As you can see, it comes in beautiful uh, piano black. One downside to this, and it's a major downside, is because it's so beautiful and glossy, you're going to get tons of fingerprints, uh, fingerprints and dust on this over a couple of weeks. So you will have to clean this uh, every couple of weeks if you're anal retentive. Why do people get so bothered when I say that? If you are OCD, there, like me, I'm going to plug this into the wall and just do a couple of test runs so you can see how cool it is, and we'll wrap up the review. Okay, so hopefully you can see the iDapt i4. One of the reasons I said I didn't absolutely love this was because the power button was a little bit finicky. Now it does have a very nice crisp press to it, but you can also bump it really easily, which means you can turn the power on and off accidentally when you're moving stuff around. And it's really more annoying than I felt like it was actually beneficial, and so I wish that was just omitted altogether. Now, I'm gonna place some devices in here and you'll begin to see that the LEDs turn orange or red rather than green. 
We got the E5 headphone amplifier plugged in. We've got our Samsung Galaxy Note plugging into the micro USB. Maybe. And we've got the iPhone 4 s plugging into the front dock now it's charging all three devices however these are all pretty high power high gain devices and if you have something that draws a lot of power like two smartphones or a tablet you may notice that sometimes it wigs out a little bit some of these will flash between red and green uh, which just starts and stops charging and it doesn't really work until you pl uh, unplug it, turn the thing off and turn it back on. So that was something I didn't absolutely love and wish that they would have fixed. It's a great device in concept and I really do like it in actual application, but there's a few things that just aren't right to make me wanna give it a Snazzy Labs approved award. So I'm going to leave it at somewhat Snazzy. It is Snazzy. It does work as it advertises. There's just a couple of things that are not quite as dead on as I would have hoped for a $60 device. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. Thank you so much for watching. This is the iDapt i4 available from iDapt.com. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.